versus if you have, you know, a ton of students, like let's say you've got five students with all the same question. Here's my wood block and you can see that's the, the side view. So my second blog post of the summer, I am on my way to Home Depot to make some whiteboards. Um, I could really use a new set because some of mine are kind of dirty, so I thought I'd use this as an opportunity to show you how to make your own whiteboards pretty cheaply. <laughs> mostly because people were looking at me but um, the uh, guy who was helping me out with the saw he was sawing the boards in the dimensions of two by two and a half I like that um, and I know some people prefer to use a smaller size like two by two because you could end up getting more boards um, I think you get about eight boards um, using one of those laminate sheets but I like the two by two and a half because the students have some excess on either side um, especially if you're doing some sort of comparison on the whiteboards. It really makes a big difference for the students. They have a little bit more you know, room to work in. Um, and so I got uh, six whiteboards and I got um, a two by four for just around $18 at Home Depot. And they're able to actually um, cut the boards for you. So I thought that that was pretty good. I am gonna show you in a little bit how to use the saw to cut some of the two by fours. So when you make your stands, you're going to want to make them about um, a foot in length. So um, I'm going to measure that. And then the um, place where the actual board will sit is about one and a half inches from the front. So I'm also going to mark that. Hi, so I am 
in school today, I know you're probably like, I'm usually doing this in my house during the summer, but I'm in school today because I wanted to show you what your stands could look like um, once they're done. So obviously you could of course leave them um, just natural, don't do anything to them. But for me, I thought it would be kind of cool to put some messages on the actual um, stands for the whiteboards. So yesterday I showed you how to cut the stands for the whiteboards using a saw. So today I thought if you wanted to design them, you could absolutely do that. But of course you could of course leave them natural. So I did this about two years ago when we started implementing the next generation science standards and it turned out for however many science and engineering practices and cross-cutting concepts that I needed, I had just enough of the blocks to, to use that. So um, I thought I could just show you kind of some ideas and then you could feel free to make your own decision. Wood blocks that I made about two years ago. Um, so you can see every single block has either a cross-cutting concept or a science and engineering practice. Um, I made these myself. Um, like so I made all the signs myself um, and then what I did was I colored each wood block with a I guess it was like a chalk marker for specific to wood like that could be used in with wood and then I attached each individual sign after cutting them out um, and by the way these like the paper that it's printed on is just honestly just printer paper I didn't do anything special I didn't even use cardstock so I printed it on printer paper and then I attached it to the sides of the block by using um, just a Mod Podge um, it's adhesive so you, I attached it using the Mod Podge and then over it I put the Mod Podge and you can see there's no bubbling it was really quite simple and easy to use um, so if you look at this right here's my wood block and you can see that's the the side view and then that's the front and so when the students display the whiteboards you can see what cross-cutting concepts um, are what science and engineering practice is on the front you notice like there's different shapes so each shape corresponds to either a science and engineering practice or a cross-cutting concept so obviously like patterns is going to be a circular shape which is the same as cause and effect because these are both cross-cutting concepts and then constructing explanations and analyzing and interpreting data are science and engineering practices so they have a similar shape. So this would also be used um, for grouping so like if you wanted to kind of mix things up a bit you could tell your students anybody that has an oval you want to go to somebody or another team that has um, kind of this uh, zigzag shape um, so or wavy shape I guess it is. Um, so that that's another option that you can do with these, um, especially if your district is asking you to have your students kind of identify which science and engineering practice or cross-cutting concept that they're using. This would be really, really helpful. Thank you so much for watching my video on how to create your own whiteboards. Sometimes I get questions from teachers about you know how to use them, and um, I find in my classroom anyway, there's two major uses. So the first use um, is actually a fairly new use because we just you know, adopted the next generation science standards in the last two years. So I use them for students to construct models and um, I like them because the students can make revisions to their models fairly easily. So basically, you know, I give the students a task to construct a model for a phenomenon and then um, they're able to go through and um, use their whiteboards to construct that model and then often what I have the students do is um, put the whiteboard that they've created on the stand and then everybody does like a like a gallery walk so that's a really effective use of it from what I found and then secondly as you might expect um, really you know gathering data as a formative assessment for your students so the students um, in my classes would often be assigned a number um, like on a homework worksheet or you know some sort of do now or bell ringer and then um, they get up and then they um, write the answer to that problem you know showing all the work and whatnot on the whiteboard and then they display it so essentially you create a um, you know answer key you know the students all create an answer key and then the students will get up and check their answers and walk around the room and then anything you know that there's something wrong with the students will kind of fix it and check in with each other so that's another way to use them um, the one way that I've been using it more recently this year um, this, this past year actually is with the use of the unit menus so uh, my students tend to really like worksheets I don't know <laughs> I don't know what it is but they really they really do like the worksheets so um, but then there are some students that really don't and so I wanted to kind of 
you know, reach out to them a little bit and, and help them. And so instead, uh, the students that don't tend to like worksheets have been gravitating towards the use of whiteboards. And so what I do for that, for the unit menus, is I give the students a choice. They can do the worksheet or they can um, use the whiteboards and then have a task list. So the task list just has a bunch of problems that they have to do, and then as they complete each problem, I just come over and I sign off on it. I personally really like that because I can see what they're doing more readily and I can assist them. So I, I feel like I'm almost able to help the students with the whiteboards a little bit more because I can more clearly see what they're doing and it's more of a conversation versus if you have you know a ton of students like let's say you've got five students with all the same question as you go from worksheet to worksheet you have to help each individual student and you're essentially repeating yourself so I kind of like being able to use the whiteboards because I have more students working on a particular problem at the same time so I can address all of their questions at once so that makes it pretty easy so that's pretty much it for me I hope Hope you are having a great summer I know I am you can see I'm all dressed down my hair is kind of a mess whatever <laughs> anything goes but um, you know it'll be August before you know it and then I'll be gearing up to uh, to start school again so I'm really trying to enjoy this but um, anyway thank you so much for watching I hope this was insightful I hope this was helpful and I will talk to you again in about two weeks <laughs>